Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Today we're taking a look at the Corsair 270R. Let's do it. Okay, so the Corsair 270R. This is Corsair's, uh, one of Corsair's newer budget series cases. Um, and I say budget, it's about £50 on the dot in this country at the moment. Um, and uh, that, cl that classifies as a budget case to me. Um, I'll talk a bit more about that later on in the video. Um, however, it's really good value for money. I think it's more or less as cheap as you can go without getting tapped. Um, I'm always on the quest for affordable, cheap, but not crap cases. Uh, because a lot of uh, a lot of small home builds that you do, you don't want them in exotic cases. It just jacks up the cost of the build without adding anything that the client actually cares about. Because if it's, if it's not a gaming computer, no one cares what the case is. So, um, but the problem is, is when you buy super cheap cases, you often get tat, which is just it's just stamped tin and scratchy plastic tat. There's no other way of putting it. However, the 270R, I've actually had a look at one of these before. I did a build in one and I liked it a lot, but unfortunately I didn't record the build. So this time we've got an opportunity to take a closer look. Now, the first thing you'll notice is on a 50 pound case, we've got a nice windowed side panel, quite a big window as well. It's not, it's not full edge to edge, but that's a large window. Um, so it's a really nice side panel. And the side panel also has these really nice braces around the edge of it. It's not got any of the really naff stamped tin stuff. It's actually braced, so it's not horribly flexible and like a wobble board kind of thing. Um, and as soon as we open up the case, you'll notice that we've got a very modern looking interior layout. We've got a power supply enclosure and the uh, what I refer to as the modern style, very open front end. We've also got an LED fan in this one, which I don't recall coming with the other one that I've looked at. Um, so as you can see, it's actually fairly stylish on the inside. You can build something that looks ultra modern, just like the more expensive premium cases in something that literally costs 50 pounds. So um, around the front side of the case, we'll find of course there's normal sort of signature slab front. And then on the side here, as you can see, we've got the front panel connectors or the side panel rather. Uh, we've got reset, uh, power up the top, two USB 3s, and headphone and microphone and the hard drive light. Um, not a big fan of these being on the side of the computer because to be honest, um, generally speaking, you're going to have your computer on one side of the desk or the other. Now, if you have the computer on the right-hand side of the desk, so you can see in through the side panel window, you're going to have it up against a wall and th these are going to be inaccessible. Then if you have it up against the left side of the desk, so these are nice and accessible, you can't see in through the window. So my biggest beef with this case from the start is just quite literally the side, the, the front panel connectors are on the wrong side of the case. Uh, and personally, I don't know what plank thought that was a good place to put it. That's my only major beef with this case. But you know, I'm sure you can have it a couple of inches away from the wall so you can get to those connectors or something. Um, however, past that, um, if we have a look around the front side, we've got full height um, fan mounts here, which can take up to three 140 millimeter fans. Um, so you've got big space in there. Um, and that means you can put in big water cooling radiators as well, which is something that often gets missed on budget cases. Budget cases often do not have space for big reds. Um, and as well as that, we also have space for big 140 millimeter fans up on the top as well. We've got this big, huge grill along the top here. Um, and that is gonna fit the biggest water cooling radiators. And it's a little bit offset. Again, if you have a look at those rails, they're a little bit offset so you can fit that radiator in and it's not gonna foul up the motherboard, which is gonna be out to here or so. So lots and lots of space for water cooling setups, which is where, of course, there's other budget cases like the 100 and 200R, which we've looked on this channel before. That's where those ones really fall behind. They don't have a lot of space inside them for water cooling. Um, so yeah, lots and lots of interior space. In addition to that, this panel here, this sticks out a bit. So as you can see, we've actually got a slope, which makes cable tidying super easy there. Um, these, uh, this area here is for hard drive mounting. And I'll show you that in a bit more detail in a minute. It's kind of an interesting design, um, but we'll get to that. What I think we're gonna do is we're gonna start building a computer in this, and I'll show you all of the features as we go through it. So let's get stuck into it. So the build that we're gonna be working on in this case 
is uh, what I would refer to as a mid-range, no shiny build. Um, so mid-range means we've got an i5 and a GTX 1060 to go in here. That's our baseline, which is gonna give us really good performance in pretty much anything that the client wants to run on it. Um, however, the no shiny means that it's been built down to a cost. Um, the client spec'd up this machine and they were looking to build it as cheap as they possibly could. They stretched their budget as much as they could. Um, and that means we've got a couple of slightly lesser components going in. We're building Sky Lake here, it's not even Cabby Lake. Um, however, and a lot of the time that immediately makes people say sort of, uh, you know, Sky Lake, why not Cabby, why not coffee, you know? But the thing is, is that when you're building a computer, if you save like 15 to 20 pounds on each component that's going into it, you're gonna knock at least 100 pounds off of the final cost of the computer. And for a lot of people, that's the difference of between being able to get an i5 or having to settle for an i3 or something like that, as is the case with this one. So, uh, so yeah, as I say, we've got a no shiny build going in. Um, and that's also why we're building in a sort of budget case, because a lot of the time when, I, when people are saying, oh, I'm going to buy a case for my computer, um, they're looking at uh, about 50 pounds. I'm like, oh, if you spend, say, uh, 60 or 70 pounds, you could get yourself you know, an NZXT S340 Elite or a Corsair 400C or something like that. But the thing is, is if you spend that extra 10 or 15 pounds on all of the components, again, you're going to end up spending another 100 pounds on your build. Um, and that's going to suffer in the spec of it. So this is going to be a deliberately no shiny build. Okay, right, so we've taken all the interior contents out and it looks like we've got our standoffs all pre-fitted and all in the correct places, which is always a good start. I like it when this happens. We've also got the nice notch standoff in the middle, so I should be able to drop my motherboard right into there without having to mess about with any of that. This back panel has got just a little bit of flex in it, but not very much. This has what I call the inny design, where the PCI brackets are all inset into the case rather than sticking out the back. Uh, and I'm a, I much prefer this design um, because it puts all of these bolts on the interior instead of sticking out the back. And it generally creates a much stronger back panel that has less flex in it. And it just feels a lot nicer when you're building the computer. All right, so this is a pretty compact motherboard we've got going in here. And we've only got the, we've only got six screws for this one. So they are all lining up, but we're not gonna need these fellas. We'll leave them in place because there's no need to take them out. So let's get that all screwed in. Okay, so we've got Imperial uh, standoffs on this case. So we're going in with the corset thread screws. And I'm trying to use a screwdriver that's much too small for this job. Okay, our motherboard is in, and due to the fact that we've got quite a narrow motherboard going into this build, we've got a fair bit of wasted space here, so it's kind of showing off the, the holes around the back of the board. So that's not fantastic for aesthetics, but it's the best that we can do. We are working on a budget build here, so please, that's why we have the narrow looking motherboard and stuff. But all the same, we should end up with something that looks good. I'm a big believer that um, to, uh, to the most part, you can make any computer look good if you just take a bit of care and attention when building it. So next up, we're putting in a power supply. So let's take a look around the back of this case. So this is one of the areas where the design of this case actually starts making a lot of sense. Um, if we look around the back here, and if I just move all this front panel junk out of the way, um, as you can see, we've got two hard drive mount points, two three and a half inch points around the back here. Um, now this is a really interesting design because what you can do is you can remove these brackets and put them around the front, which is what I'm going to do for the bottom one here, ah, if I can get it off. Um, then in addition to that, we've also got two uh, two and a half inch mounts here for two and a half inch SSDs and hard drives. Um, so if you've got a big water cooling rad all the way down the front of the case, you can put your hard drives around the back here out of sight 
Or, as is the case with this one, if you're not water cooling, you can take this cage and you can mount it and put your hard drives on show out the front, which is what I'm gonna do. So it's a pretty funky design there because it lets you sort of change the layout of the case to show off the best of what you're putting in it. My only beef with that is that um, the advantage is that it lets you put in the big, huge three fan radiators at the front. Um, but the disadvantage is that although this is a really cool idea, as we'll find a bit later on, it's actually kind of awkward getting the wiring into these things, which I'll show you later. And all the same, I'd kind of have been happy if they just made it tall enough for a two fan radiator and put just a normal hard drive cage down the bottom. So next up, we're gonna put in our power supply. We've got a fully modular power supply going into this one. This is an EVGA Supernova. This is a really nice power supply, actually. It's a little bit over spec considering the rest of this computer, but hey, you know, it's the last power supply they'll ever need. Um, now, uh, the thing, the power supply is gonna go straight into here. We've got this huge cavity for burying cables in, which is super cool. We also have this, uh, the uh, power supply enclosure is vented at the top which means I can piss off everyone on YouTube by mounting my power supply fan side up. So uh, this is gonna mean that the power supply can intake its air from inside the computer and he's not gonna have to keep dusting the power supply uh, intake vent. Um, however, you can also mount it fan side down and then every couple of weeks or so, you can slide out the filter on the bottom just to keep the power supply from choking on dust. However, my advice, um, is to mount your power supply fan side up in this one so you get a nice clean air intake from inside the computer. Um, now, because it's kind of fiddly to get your hands into this area, uh, see, I can put the power supply in there, but then it's kind of, um, well, we could probably plug everything in, but you might want to consider plugging in all of the modular cables you're going to need before you screw your power supply in. So have a little bit of foresight. Um, let me think. Yeah, I'm definitely going to do that. So we're going to take this out and I'm going to connect all of my modular cables to the back of my power supply. So let's get these all plugged in. And we do have some nice gaps up the top of the case here to thread our cables through, including a nice big one in the corner, specifically for the CPU power cable, which is nice. Again, this seems like obvious things to find in most computer cases, but on budget cases, it's things like that that are often missing, where the designers just don't care because it's a budget case. Right, then we're gonna be having that coming in across there. Um, now, I could bring in our uh, I could bring in my ATX cable just through this void here because of short motherboard. However, that's going to look a bit naff. I'm going to try taking it across and in through a 90 degree to try and bulk out the inside a bit more to give the impression that the computer is bigger than it is. And that's how we sort of minimize the impact of uh, sort of poor man's motherboard. Um, okay, right. Our SATA stuff, that's going to be around the front. Um, so we're going to take that mm, through that hole over there, I think. Maybe, we'll have a look at that in a sec. And then we're gonna need VGA coming up from the bottom there. Right, how easy is it to remove the front panel? This should just be a pull away job. Yeah, a quick prime tool around the edges and that's just popping off. Oh, that's fun. So. The front panel connectors actually stay in situ when you remove the uh, the front grill. That's really good for maintenance. That makes maintenance super easy. So that is a nice touch, I like that. So our front panel is filtered all the way around all edges. So we've got front panel filters um, on all sides. These are just sort of glued on. They're, they're not supposed to be removable, but you can remove them. Um, so. It's not great from a maintenance and cleaning perspective, but it's, it is maintainable. And given the fact that you can very easily remove this front panel, 
uh, without having to disassemble the whole computer. And also because that uh, the front panel connectors stay in place, it's quite easy to take that off and just use a paintbrush on it or something like that. So that's cool, I like it. It's a lot easier to deal with than some of the other Corsair cases I've encountered. There we go. We'll probably bring that fan in somewhere else at some point, uh, possibly at the back of the case. I'm kind of going to make it up as I go along. Uh, given that this is an i5 with a 1060 in it, um, cooling is not going to be an issue on this thing. We're not going to be fighting heat. So I'm actually kind of free to do whatever I want with the fans. And I'm probably going to opt for just a single exhaust fan at the back um, just to keep some nice case airflow going. And that's probably all we're going to need, really. Okay, let's start getting some of these cables routed so we can see how everything's gonna sit. So, because this, uh, as I mentioned earlier on, this panel here is raised up slightly, we can have the cables just sort of come straight out. We don't have to do really horrible bends in them, as you often do uh, when routing these cables. I am gonna stick a 90 degree corner on my ATX connector though, and then it can just go straight in like that. So, that's just gonna go just straight out, out of sight. And that's gonna look great. Now one annoying thing is we've got a hole at the bottom here for um, the lower motherboard headers but it's over here and there's nothing further along so we don't really have much options for keeping these annoying noodly wires out of sight. I mean my front, my HD audio connector, I'm just going to have to run that along the bottom of the motherboard here. I've got no options for really hiding that which is kind of annoying, like it just needed another hole back here or something. However, we do have some really nicely labeled front panel um, header leads. These are all labeled up, including the plus and the minus, which catches a lot of amateur builders out. So to mount our hard drive, uh, we're going to place this hard drive bracket in something like that. So that allows the hard drive to sit like that. And we can put it either way up on the bracket. So if I put it in that way, it's probably going to sit about there. So we can have the label being the right way up. That puts the connectors there. So we would go to that hole there. Or if I had it the other way up, the connectors would be up in the top corner where there are plenty of holes for the wires as well. The lower one is a little less convenient. Again, we've got a hole right down in the bottom right here, but if we, uh, if we connect it all up to be fitted there, we'll actually find that the connector for the hard drive is here, and because the hard drive connector is right up against the, the back plate of the uh, case, it's quite difficult to actually plug anything into it. I'm gonna try and go for a compromise. Um, I'm gonna mount my hard drive upside down so its connectors are near this hole. And then I'm gonna put my SSD up here on this one here with its connector pointing down. And then I can have this serial ATA power cable hopefully going to both drives in a nice kind of daisy chain fashion. So let's see how that works out. There we go, so there's our power into our drives. Let's flip this over and sort out the cables at the back now that they're all tidy, now that they're all plugged in. I've got some of these super awesome Velcro tiebacks that came with the power supply. So we can thread some of these in and those are gonna be really nice. There we 
go. That keeps everything in check back here so it doesn't rattle or fall out of place or do anything untoward. Right, now we need some serial ATA cables going to these things. So 90 degree SASA cables are gonna work against us in this case because we've got flats on all sides here. So I'm gonna ditch this 90 degree one and use an extra straight one that I've got handy. And I'm hoping that that's gonna be long enough. Yeah, easy. So we can take that down through our hole around the back. I think we're gonna go vertical for this. Hmm, that's not as good as I was imagining it to be. It's possible, but I kind of hoped that that would be a little bit nicer. I've put in some nice smooth loops here, so none of this is under too much tension or anything, but it just looks a little bit too scrambled for my taste. That doesn't look like it was deliberately tidied that way. It just looks like it's been shoved in. Um, let's try doing this tops and bottoms, and we'll just stick in another serial ATA daisy chain because it's all gonna be out of sight behind here anyway, so who cares? There we go. That setup works much better. It was a little bit more faff to get it all into position, but it's given us a much neater layout. So yeah, uh, that's worked out better than I recall. I'm not sure why I didn't do that last time. However, at any rate, that is perfectly fine. Cool, right. Uh, we need to start getting some stuff onto our motherboard then in that case. So at this point you can see that even with the motherboard fitted, the plugs in and memory and all of this fitted and an SSD up here, we've still got loads of room for water cooling. If you wanted to put in a 140mm rad, you're gonna have a little bit of problems perhaps with the CPU power lead. You might be able to work out those kinks. You might be able to put a really sharp 90 degree in that. So I'd be a little bit cautious about using 140mm radiators. So that would be like, um, uh, 280 mil total radiators. However, a 240 mil rad, so dual 120s, that's gonna fit in there just fine. Hell, you could even put it sort of halfway along like that to sort of center it in the middle of the case and you'd have loads of room to spare. So really good clearance around the top here. This thing could really, this thing would really look good with a couple of exhaust fans at the top and then no back fan. But uh, I don't have enough fans to work with in this particular instance. So we're gonna keep the back fan in and then I think we're gonna put that LED fan we took out the front back in up the top so it's just sort of blowing straight across and we're gonna have the cross breeze right across our CPU cooler. Anyone who's watched my how to build a computer video, you might notice that I haven't unboxed everything before starting the build and I'm penning myself into a corner here. I've penned myself up against the back of the desk and I've got box, 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 other junk box in my hand that I'm now gonna put down there and now I have nowhere to unpackage my CPU cooler. Make sure you unbox all your stuff before you start. It makes things so much easier, it really does.
always forget to take the fans off of these things. It makes everything a million times easier. Look at all this space. Okay, it's time for a graphics card to go in this thing. We've got an EVGA GTX 1060. This is the six gig edition, and it's, uh, I think it's the super clocked one as well. Yep, it's the super clocked one, so it's a little bit quicker than the stock 1060 as well. It's well worth paying a little bit extra for the six gig edition, because uh, not only does it have a slightly more powerful GPU than the three gig 1060, um, but the extra memory does help you out in badly optimized games. So it's worth having it there. And I just need to sort of wriggle this in now. It's catching on something and I'm not sure what. I think we're catching on the case. There we go. That's in. And then our pre-run power cable there is just going to come up and in. Just put a nice little bend in that. And I think we're just going to, we're just gonna zip tie the extra two pins on the end there, I think. There we go, neat little zip tie, just to keep the extra unused two pins holding onto the side there so it don't just stick out in a random direction. Good, right. Let's, uh, let's put all the panels back on this case, and I think we're good to go. Okay, so we're putting the LED fan back in the front, and I'm putting it at the lowest point of the top fan mount, which puts it roughly in line with the CPU fan. So that means that um, despite not having decked out all of the fan points, we've got a fairly balanced look in the case. Because so one thing that annoys me about case fans is that you don't really want just a single one on its own floating in the middle of nowhere, like just there, that just seems to do nothing while there's loads of empty bays around. Whereas having it up the top there, you won't see it from the front, but from the side profile, we'll have this nice cross flow going straight through the CPU cooler, which is what I like to see. So we'll just wire that around the back and we also need to get the rear fan plugged in as well that I've forgotten about. Pro tip, when you unbox a new case, a plastic window like this is gonna attract dust like no one else's business. So the first thing you wanna do, get some multi-surface polish and just give it a dust and a clean. Make sure you use a clean cloth, otherwise, otherwise you'll put scratches in it straight away. However, this multi-surface polish will just give it an anti-static coat, just so it tries to resist dust and fingerprints. And you'll want to do this on both sides of the window. Don't elbow grease it, just wipe it down. go. Let's get this bad boy turned on. Ah, there's a red fan. I don't know what color I expected it to be, but apparently it's red. All right, so it doesn't produce a whole lot of light, so um, don't expect to be able to illuminate your case with it. All in all though, that is a nice tidy little build. So the 270R really nice case in a fantastic value for money. Um, going over this case, the internal structure, the design, and the overall build quality feels just like a premium case. And by a premium case, I'm talking something within the realms of like 70 to 130 pounds, that kind of money. So we're not talking about the topping cases, but the common cases, NZXT S340, NZXT H440, uh, those kinds of cases, and of course, Corsair's upper-end cases like the 400C and so on. Uh, this case feels just as high quality as that, whereas 
I've built in other budget cases before, like you know, cheap, uh, cheap bit Phoenix cases and stuff, where when as soon as you take the badge off the front of it, it just feels like any other tat case where it's just all stamped tin on the inside with a really scratchy plastic front cover. This does not feel like that. And when you account for this really nice big side panel window we've got, and the fact that it's got the internal layout of a modern case, the power supply enclosure, uh, 50 pounds is an absolute bargain for this case, I believe. And it's my new favorite case for lower end builds, um, or even just, you know, like higher end builds, but where, where price is conscious, basically, because if you're trying to, if you're really stretching your budget and you want to squeeze as much in there as possible, you've got to shave like 10 or 15 pounds off of everything you buy. Uh, and that means that suddenly uh, getting, getting your case for 50 pounds instead of 65 or 70 is the difference between being able to squeeze that 1060, six gigabyte in there or having to settle for the three gigabyte, for example. Um, so the bits that I don't like, well, um, the top panel, Although we've got great space on the top panel here, the lack of any kind of mesh filter on top makes this just look a bit unfinished. You know, we've got these big rails here with nothing in them. And even if you had fans in there, all your screws would be on show. You know, this really wants the kind of mesh filter that you get on the more expensive cases. For example, if I grab the one from my 400C here, here's the mesh grill that goes on my 400C with the dust on it. <laughs> This is why you have to clean your filters. Um, but for example, if I stick that on top there, which it doesn't quite fit, but look at the difference with that on. You see how that just finishes off the top of the case. Imagine that this fits properly. You get the idea. It really wants a nice mesh grill like that to sit on top of it. Uh, likewise, my other beef with this case is quite frankly, the front panel connectors are on the wrong side. So basically, I can the only logical reason I can see why they put the front panel connector on the right-hand side of the case is to make it like this clean-looking side here. So you've just got like no visible connectors or buttons. But I just think that's really daft. Every other case has the front panel uh, on the top, on the front, uh, easy access. That's what it's for. That's what it's there for. Uh, so the front panel is in a daft place, I think. However, everything about everything else about this case. I really like. Uh, let's take another look around the inside. So our interior layout has, dis has ended up being super, super tidy. Again, budget cases have a nasty habit of re having really awful cable management. But this cable void at the back here just makes tidying super, super easy. Um, I, you know, I didn't have to spend a lot of time on the cable tidying and it's come out really good. Um, this one looks a little bit scrubby, scruffy around this area just simply because we have a narrow motherboard that doesn't stick out. If you're putting higher, a higher end motherboard into this one, your motherboard is going to stick out to at least here, which means you're going to lose these couple of inches of cable runs and they're just going to disappear straight into that void. Uh, the hard drive mounts, these are a really cool idea. Um, cable management is a little bit tricky on there if you're not apt at dealing with cables. Uh, but as you can see, you can get a really nice tidy little layout there and put your drives on show or you can flip them around and put them on the other side. However, bearing in mind, if you put these on the other side, that's gonna drastically reduce your cable tidy space. So um, keep that in mind if you're planning on filling this thing with hard drives. Personally, I still think they could have just extended the power supply enclosure up to the front, stuck a two, three and a half inch um, cage in there, and then just left space for a 280 mil rad there. Um, you know, just like on the, um, the 400C. Um, you know, the 400C has that exact same design and it works. I don't see a problem with it. I think they should have done that myself, but this is still kind of cool. Um, and as I say, you could put a full blown water cooling kit in here and have room to spare. Uh, considering the size of this case, uh, I would consider this a fairly compact case. It's got amazing internal space, which is again, my primary complaint with a lot of budget cases is that they are not very efficient with their internal space. So yeah, all in all, fantastic case. I like it. It's gonna be my weapon of choice for my lower end builds in the future. Whether they're office builds or gaming builds, it still looks fantastic. This is not even a really high spec. As you can see, we've got no shiny in here, but it's such a tidy little build. So yeah, really impressive. Uh, definitely recommend it. Good case. Thank you for watching everyone. I'll see you all soon. Goodbye for now.